everyone and welcome to another newscast. My name is Sam Healy and in this video we're going to tell you all the latest news about our projects as well as the company. As always, if you don't want to watch the entire video, you can skip to the parts that interest you by utilizing the timestamps in the description below. This week we don't have any further information on Super Fantasy Brawl or Steam Watchers. But let's get to the rest of our projects. Some good news regarding Joan of Arc today. The layout work for the entire game will be finished this week. Teutonic Knights was the last item on our list, together with some extra cards, such as stretch gold profiles and scenario-specific materials. We'll show you the Teutonic Knights book while our internal task force provides the last necessary proofreading and checking passes on every single element of the game very soon. That way, we can still slot in some of your feedback on the latest in Joan of Arc content. The last proofing we'll be doing here will ensure that all of the new materials coincide with the older elements from the game, be it phrasing, layout style, etc. As well as preventing any errors on layout maps and renders used for setup. We'll also check for final inconsistencies between the English and the French files for the Teutonic Knights scenario book, which is the last step in their creation. We're getting really close to sending files over to the factory for the first printed tryouts of the full Joan of Arc 1.5 game, and we'll keep you updated on those when they get here. In the meantime, we may be a bit discreet after showing you the Teutonic Knights books as we focus on wrapping up file exports and versioning and putting our all into providing you the best game that we possibly can. Today for Solomon Kane, I just wanted to share some pics of my work copy of Solomon Kane that arrived just this morning as I was preparing my coffee. We just wanted to show you what you can expect to receive as your pledges begin to show up in the near future. So enjoy. For Reich Busters this week, the Errata Pack is currently in print and there are a few shipping milestones we are expecting to reach. First, they will be on the boat by mid-February, before Chinese New Year. Second, delivery to backers from the hubs for Asia is expected to be by February. And third, delivery to backers from the hubs for the rest of the world is expected to start by mid-April. So essentially, this is the time frame that we expect for backers to receive their errata packs. 
As a reminder, only backers and eShop buyers will have it shipped to them free of charge. Anyone who purchased the game secondhand should first try to contact the one from whom they purchased the game and try to work something out with them. If that proves to be a problem, pe if that proves to be a problem, please feel free to contact us at support at mythicgames.net to figure out a solution. We will also have overstock of the errata pack on our eShop, so there will be options available. Now, many of you have been asking about the sleeves, and we have been hearing you. North American backers are currently the ones missing their sleeves. The rest of the backers should have already received them. A number of logistical issues caused this delay, and we apologize for it. We have, however, been able to approve the shipping of the sleeves, and hopefully they should be out very shortly. Once we hear back from Quartermaster Logistics, we'll get back to you with a special update. In the meantime, if you have any questions, please contact support at mythicgames.net. We sincerely thank you for your patience. For Enchanters today, the UK pallets are ready and only need to provide customs paperwork to show that the fees have been paid. So they should be shipping to Spiral Galaxy by the end of the week. Once the paperwork has been processed, we will have an ETA for their arrival in the UK. Orders including East Quest, Odyssey, and Basic Pledges, as well as the Polish language versions, have not yet completely been fulfilled. Some of you have received part of your pledge or simply the components. Uh, the problem we've had was that the boxes for those games could not be printed in our China factory due to the very low number of orders. Boxes are currently being made in our German factory and they will be shipping out soon. This affects 423 backers in total. If you have any questions, please send us an email at support at mythicgames.net. We'll be sending personalized emails to all those affected. Special orders to the U.S., orders that were either split or include several add-ons, are currently being reviewed and will be sent in the coming weeks. For Hell the Last Saga, last week we expanded our premises and installed two additional test rooms to be able to test more scenarios and faster. With this in mind, we will surely launch an external test campaign as well, first in French and then in English. Those of you who would be interested in spoiling yourself on a beta prototype can apply by sending an email to david at mythicgames.net. Places are limited and selection criteria will be random. One of the most memorable of the last songs we've tested, song number five, will take players out of the routine they've set up in an illusion of comfort and security by offering them an investigation, followed by a swift trial with dramatic consequences. In addition to getting off the beaten path, this song will also offer two new mini-maps featuring two new locations, one of them being the longship itself. Don't beg us for a preview just yet. Our artist, David Demere, is at work on the deck to get it afloat soon. And one of these scenarios will also allow you to use in another context the very same miniature you unlocked at the end of the campaign. But that's all for this week. In a fortnight, however, we'll be able to talk about herbs and potions. For Darkest Dungeon today, the Pledge Manager opens on Wednesday, January 20th, and we will update the description of this video with the link to that Pledge Manager as soon as it's ready. Kickstarter backers will have to check the... Mm, Kickstarter backers will have to check the email addresses with which you backed the Kickstarter, as this is the one to which you will get a message notifying you that the Pledge Manager is active. For our late pledgers, you'll find everything at the same price as it was during the Kickstarter campaign. The Musketeer miniature, however, was a free promotional item with any core pledge or higher only during the Kickstarter campaign. So if late pledgers want it, you'll need to add it to your cart. If you pledged at the dungeon pledge level or higher during the Kickstarter campaign, it will be added to your pledge for free by us after you complete your pledge manager. You will neither see it in your inventory upon checkout, nor will you need to add it during this process yourself. Hey everybody, I'm back. We made it. 
We kept it on the down low. Nobody told the other Sam how this is happening. And he didn't catch wind of it either. He's none the wiser. He's kind of dumb. Anyway, uh, we're going to go ahead and continue doing this. Um, next week, we're going to start looking at a couple of Kickstarters that I have my eye on uh, that look pretty cool. This week, I'm just going to continue sharing three games that I've been playing recently that I've really enjoyed. Maybe even just been reminded of it, okay? This first one, however, is definitely a reminder, and that is Deception Murder in Hong Kong. Now, this one is the Undercover Allies box. So they came out with an expansion called Undercover Allies. Then they also included a, a new box that would hold everything from the base game and everything that came in the new expansions. I also have some stuff in here that are from the uh, country sets uh, that they came out as well. They're kind of promotional type items, but... Anyway, I think I have everything that there is for this game, and I'm so happy about it. Um, Deception Murder in Hong Kong is kind of a uh, social deduction game where um, up to two people are going to be the bad guys. One is a murderer, and one is the accomplice. And then the rest of the people are kind of um, investigators that are trying to find out how a homicide occurred. Um, there is a forensic scientist who is the person that's going to be giving clues on six cardboard tokens that are laid out on the board. One of them is uh, the, um, the, the location of the crime. And then another one is going to be, oh man, I can't remember what it is. Kind of like the, uh, the kind of crime that it was, whether it was... Um, I don't know. It, they're all homicides. But anyway, there's and then there's four other clue cards that get put out there. So there's six all together. And that's the only way that the forensic scientists can communicate with the rest of the people in the group. The rest of the people have to, in the group have these uh, cards in front of them. Some of them are the means by which the murder was carried out. And some of them are clues that were left at the scene that you can kind of follow up. Anyway, they have those set in front of you. The murderer picks one of each from his tableau, uh, and then the forensic scientist is able to start giving clues. It's a really fun game. The more the merrier with this one. This is one of my favorite party games, and it really does shine well that way because it's not that hard to teach. Um, it's just kind of a, a, a social interaction with a little bit of guidance here and there. Really enjoy this game a lot. If you haven't played it yet, please try it out. Um, it, it it doesn't play very well with a fewer with a fewer number of players. I think you can play with uh, four at least. Yeah, four to fourteen people can play this. And frankly, I've played one game with twelve at a college. Oh my goodness! It took a while, a little bit longer than usual, but it was so fun. Uh, the last game I played uh, just last week was with eight people. Had a great time. So check this one out, please, please, please. Another one I've played recently is this one right here, Memoir 44. Now this is the one that I've, this is like in my top five games of all time. I love this game, but I was just teaching my 10 year old Aiden how to play and he was a little, mm, he enjoyed it, but it's gonna take a little bit more time because I don't think he grasped all the rules yet, but he did have a good time. This is one of my favorite games. I love uh, how this game plays. I love the focus on history that it has within each of the scenarios. It gives you a breakdown of each of the scenarios um, uh, and what actually happened, the battles that were actually fought. So it puts in your mind the reminder that this is not just a game. It, it, it's, it's based on real life. You know, Real people went through these things that were kind of reenacting on a board. So I love I love that because I, I do think that you know as the saying goes you know people who forget history are doomed to repeat it. So uh, there's that. But this is a really fun game, uh, and it's easy to teach on top of that. So uh, we we got going in, in pretty much about 30 minutes. Um, uh, that's even kind of you know it took me about that. That's including setup. And I was doing most of the setup myself, but, uh, but uh, my son was also setting up his troops on the board as well. We got setup done and rules in about 30 minutes. And then we just started going for it. So it was a really fun time, had, an, had a great time, and I think he enjoyed it too. I'm gonna try to get it back to the table pretty soon. But if you haven't checked this out, do so now. Um, I also saw where they're starting to bring back some of the older expansions, reprinting them. So uh, there's probably more available now than there has ever been since it's been released. So check it out.
And then another game I played recently was this right here, The Quacks of Quedlinburg. Now this is really kind of not on my radar usually, but man is this a fun game to play. I've played it a couple of times when I was with the Dice Hour, but uh, since then I, I just haven't been around somebody that had a copy of it. But uh, a buddy of mine here in town and I and uh, his wife got together and played it and it was a fun time. Uh, he does it a little bit different. Usually you can just go ahead and, and, and pull the, the tokens out of your bag and, and place it on, on your little cauldron um, as fast as you want to. But he does it a little bit different. He almost does it kind of like a, an auction where um, he's saying, you know, or bingo parlor where he, he says, okay, draw. And everybody draws and place it out. All right, draw another one. Everybody goes and place it out. And we pause when somebody has to do so. You can kind of watch what everybody else is doing. So it's not just you getting into this little cone of awareness with yourself. So it was really kind of more fun the way that uh, he uh, ran the game. So I really thought that was fun. Uh, you play over nine rounds, so you, you can you can see where the, the end of the game is coming up and it's just really a lot of fun. Uh, so if you haven't tried Quacks of Quedlinburg yet, you really do need to give it a whirl. Uh, the cardboard tokens after a while, they're going to wear out on you, but there are, I think on the uh, BGG promo shop or something to that effect, there are these little tokens that are the same shape as the cardboard tokens, and they're made out of a, a like a plastic, acrylic plastic or something to that effect. And uh, they're really nice. Uh, but anyway, you can check that out if you want. But uh, Quacks of Quedlinburg, really fun game. You should give it a whirl. Anyway, that's all I have time for. Let me get out of here. Bye. <laughs> So that's about it for this week. Remember that Leo will be live tomorrow at 6 p.m. GMT, 1 p.m. Eastern Time on our YouTube channel with a live Q&A in English and at 8.30 p.m. Paris Time with a live Q&A in French. So tune in if you have any questions or if you just want to see what he might spoil. He does have a tendency to do that from time to time. So that's it for this week. Stay home, stay safe, play some games while you're at it, and hey, we'll see you on the flip side. Take care.